This is Newsmax TV. I'm Ashley Martella. South Carolina Senator Jim DeMint calls this man the Democrat Party's worst nightmare because he opposes massive spending, bailouts, and takeovers. His name is Michael Williams, and he's running for the U.S. Senate from Texas. His bid is for the seat being left vacant by Kay Bailey Hutchinson, who's running for governor. Mr. Williams serves on the Railroad Commission of Texas, which, despite its name, actually regulates the oil and natural gas industries, not railroads. He was appointed to the commission by then-Governor George Bush in 1998 and was elected in his own right three times since. He is the first black to hold a statewide elected office in Texas history. He was also a special assistant to Attorney General Richard Thornburg, a federal prosecutor and assistant district attorney. Welcome to Newsmax, Commissioner. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. All right, we'll start with the obligatory question. Why do you want to run for the U.S. Senate? I'm running for the U.S. Senate because I want to rally Americans around the next generation of conservative solutions and bold action to advance the cause of freedom. And with that, we'll be able to obviously add jobs and prosperity, innovation and entrepreneurship. Okay, you have an interesting history of actually rejecting pay raises for yourself. Could you please explain that, sir? Well, on three different occasions, uh, the Texas legislature has, uh, pay, has voted for pay raises for the nine of us who are in the executive branch of government. As a matter of fact, uh, that pay raise would be about $160,000 if I had accepted it. I have never accepted the pay raise that the legislature has been kind enough to provide for, for uh, the, the nine of us. And there's a very, very simple reason. I have been trying to make the case that it's important for us as the elected officials to hold the line on spending. And it's a whole lot easier for me to make that case when I'm not sticking my own hand in the cookie jar. What does the upset victory of Scott Brown in Massachusetts mean to you? I think it says a couple things. It says that our message is right. You know, when uh, President Obama won in 2008, I think they made the mistake of thinking that the country had changed itself, that the country had, it was no longer a center-right country. But the fact of the matter is, it is a center-right country. And what the people in Massachusetts were telling, uh, telling America is what I hear in Texas. This administration was moving too fast too far in the wrong direction. They want us to cut federal, wasteful federal spending. They want us to unleash free markets so we can provide greater wealth and jobs and prosperity. They want us to win the war against terror, and they want us to inspire young, the young and the poor and the vulnerable to embrace the attitudes and traditions of success. Because of what many consider to be reckless spending by Congress and the Obama administration, do you think the mood of voters is changing now? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, as I go around this state, well, the first thing that you hear is that voters are saying that they want us to get spending under control. They want us to curtail, if not totally eliminate, earmarks. And they would like to see a cap on discretionary spending. I see that as I go across Texas, whether I'm sitting in boardrooms or whether I'm at tea parties, that's, that is the conversation that Texans are having. And I think that's the same conversation that's being held by Americans all across the country. All right, during his victory speech, Senator-elect Brown in Massachusetts said this, our constitution and laws exist to protect this nation. They do not grant rights and privileges to enemies in wartime. In dealing with terrorists, our tax dollars should be pay for weapons to stop them, not lawyers to defend them. Now, as a former federal prosecutor yourself, do you agree with Mr. Brown on that? I definitely agree with him. And what, 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 what he's saying is, we have to remember what, what we're doing here. It's important to call this what it really is. It is a war against terror, and that war, quite frankly, is against, against Islamic fascists. It is not an overseas contingency operation, as the administration has been calling it. We should be treating these folks as enemy combatants, not as criminal defendants. I was a prosecutor, both at the state and federal level. There is a difference, and these are enemy combatants. All right, you broke historic ground in Texas as the first black ever to hold a statewide elected executive office, and you are the highest ranking black in statewide politics today. Now, Barack Obama is the nation's first black president, one year in office under his belt now. How do you think he's doing, honestly? Well, f first of all, I mean, I, I think both the president and I have to give a great deal of credit to the people of Texas and the people of America of having elected us. And we come to those, those positions of standing on the shoulders of, of a lot of other people that came before us. But, you know, unfortunately, when I evaluate the president, 
you know, I shared a, a sense of pride, even though the president and I have a lot of differences of policy uh, on the day he was elected. Unfortunately, I have to give him a very, very poor grade for the way he's performed thus far. If you look at, if you look at spending, if you look at the effort to sort of take over one-sixth of the American economy through a health care plan uh, that, that was a government-directed health care plan, if you look at what he's told us that he wants to do in terms of a cap on every, every American household in terms of the proposal of cap and trade, if you look at uh, the, the notion of talking about closing Gitmo and then trying Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in a, in a New York civil, civil court as opposed to trying in a military court, all of those things would add up to me giving him a failing grade. American blacks still vote overwhelmingly for Democrats. What will it take for someone like you to change their minds? Well, I think first of all is that uh, we're, we have to do the same thing we do with other voting blocks. We have to go in and talk, talk to the, the American blacks and, uh, in an effort to try to solve the real problems that they have. What they want to do is to make sure that we want to solve the problem of closing the education gap. We want to solve the problem of bringing jobs into the inner city. We want to be about the business of making sure that they can, they can succeed and they can be able to save money and, and to retire. We've got to be about the business of doing that and we'll do that. But I'll, but I'll add one other thing. You know, when I become a member of the United States Senate, that will be a game changer because I'll be able to have a very, very direct conversation with, uh, with, with the African-American community about the direction not only of our party, but the direction that we think that conservative ideas can, can enhance what's happening in the black community. And finally, Commissioner, what do you say to Senator DeMint's comment that you are the Democrats' worst nightmare? I agree with him. I am the Democrats' worst nightmare because I, I, I'm the game changer. And the reason is, is because uh, not only am I I'm consistently in a committed conservative, I also have the courage to stand up to Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi, even President Obama, and the Republican establishment if that becomes necessary. So I think I, I would agree with the senator, and I appreciate him thinking of me as such. Texas U.S. Senate candidate Michael Williams, thank you so much for speaking with us here at Newsmax, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Sarah Palin's new book, Going Rogue in American Life, will be released on November 17th. You can be among the first to get your copy. Check out our incredible free offer for Sarah's new book. Just go to Newsmax.com and click on the top banner for this great offer. Act today.